Welcome to 5 and 5 from the One Stop Co-op Shop, where we discuss five key elements of a game in about five minutes. I'm Michael Kelly, and today we're looking at the adventure mode for solo and co-op play in Hero Realms. Quick disclaimer that I was sent a review copy of this game. I had played a bit of Star Realms and Hero Realms in the past, and I enjoyed them okay, but I don't love competitive deck builders, so I was really excited to try out the co-op mode for Hero Realms and see how it kind of brought the game to life for me. But can it compete with something designed purely for co-op like Aeon's End? Let's find out and get to the list. We're going to start out with a mix, and that's the way your characters upgrade over the course of the campaign. To play in the adventure packs, you need to own the hero packs, which will give you abilities and unique decks to play with your characters. And then in the adventure pack, at the end of each successful mission, you'll get to upgrade your character in some way, gaining a new treasure card into your deck, an upgraded ability. And I like the concept of how this works generally. The combination of treasures going into your deck and abilities being always available makes you feel pretty different, but on the negative side, it's super limited. At least in the one box set I've played, they have another one coming soon, because you only get to upgrade two or three things. So you don't really feel like your characters change that much by the time you're done playing these three scenarios. My number four is also a mix, two in a row, and that's the cooperation in the game when you're playing with two or more players. On the positive side, they did sprinkle in some fun cooperative elements, like you being able to attack each other's minions, and certain enemy cards having you hurt each other or affect each other in different ways. Also, I like how the core gameplay of the market in Hero Realms encourages cooperation because one player might focus on mainly yellow cards, another player might focus on mainly blue cards, and in buying those, they clear up the market for the other person's cards that come out. So that works out nicely. But on the negative side, besides that, working together for the market and hitting things together, there's not a lot of cooperation here. And I think the game could have benefited from adding a system like what you have in Legendary Encounters, where certain cards let you boost other players. But we're kicking it up to a pro for number three, and that's the scenario variety in this one box set and the ones to come. So even though there are only three scenarios in the box, there are some branching paths in the masters you fight, which actually makes it more like eight scenarios. So they really do tend to feel different and challenge you in different ways. Now, are they earth shattering differences? Or are you gonna feel like you're playing an entirely new game? No, but it worked well for me. And yes, you're gonna want more content pretty soon, but the fact that you can get this for, I don't know, 15 or $20, and they have another one coming in a month or so for another $20, I think the price point is right, even though you don't get ridiculous amounts of stuff. We have another pro at number two, although it might lean to a mix for some of you, and that's how the masters work and how quick their turns are to resolve. Before each player's turn, you'll flip one or two cards from the master's deck, you'll check the color and do some effect, usually causing some amount of damage, and then you'll play the card, often putting a minion in front of the player or affecting them with some kind of ongoing hazard. And this is a pro for me because it's so quick to resolve while still sort of feeling like you have a real Hero Realms opponent opposing you, and also the masters have nice variety, so it does feel different even with such simple mechanics. But again, it might be a mix for some of you if you're looking for more of a full automa that really models what a player would do and takes cards from the market, or if you want even more drastic differences from boss to boss like you might find in a game like Aeon's End. We're gonna end with one more pro at number one, although again, it might lean mixed for some of you. And this is where I sort of lumped in all of the core mechanics of basic hero realms. I tend to like the core gameplay here because I like deck builders and it's fun to upgrade your deck and get new powers and new combos and do more and more cool effects. And Hero Realms does this better than a lot of games that are in what I would call the Ascension deck builder style, where you have one big deck that you always draw from, because usually in those kind of games, it's always your best strategy to buy the most expensive card because it's so powerful. But Hero Realms with the color combos where having one of a color makes the same color have an extra bonus, those are so powerful that they kind of break that paradigm and really make it fun to hunt for the exact colors you want. Overall, I've really enjoyed my solo and cooperative plays with the Hero Realms Adventure Packs, and I am super excited for the next one to come out. I'm definitely picking it up. I want to play more of this and see my characters grow more. That being said, this is clearly a system that was grafted on to a competitive deck builder, so I still think the game is at its best and has the best value if you'll play it in both ways. And hey, if you want to see me play through one of these adventures with my wizard hurling fireballs left and right, click the link that just showed up. Good gaming, and I'll see you at the next stop.